Mr. Amita Kant, Secretary of DIPP, Government of India. Mr. Rajan, Chief Secretary, Government of Rajasthan. Mrs. Dino Gupta, Principal Secretary, Industries, Government of Rajasthan. Mr. Sondi and Mr. Santanam, and all the distinguished guests from India, Rajasthan, and abroad. A very, very warm welcome to you all, and I want to wish the Rajasthan well. And honestly, I promise you, this is not a hard sell. I had no intentions of uh, creating a hard sell here for any of you. The idea was actually to give you a real sell, to let you understand what actually is happening in Rajasthan, to be able to invite people to come to Rajasthan and make in Rajasthan and support uh, the government of India. Mr. Amrav Khan, you put it very nicely. I twisted uh, your arm a bit to get you on the stage because I really do believe that, as you said, the states are extremely important in the scheme of things <coughs> to support the government of India. We need every state to do its bit, to stand on its feet, to become self-originating, uh, uh, actually being able to manage to get things done on their own and only then do I believe that we can actually get as far as supporting uh, the country. With a dynamic leader in place just now, with very, very important and interesting rules that set up in front of us all, every state is contributing to make this dream come true. And for me, as I stand here and look back over the year that has gone by, I am actually filled with pride when I look to see what the people of Rajasthan and what the team of Rajasthan was able to manage in the years that have just passed. 24th January 2014, 27th October 2014, 18th November 2014, these have all been landmark dates for me because that was the day that I was able to go back to Honda, that I was able to go back to St. Gobain and that I was able to go back to JCB and announced to Rajasthan that these have now joined the workforce of the people of Rajasthan and that they will all bear the stamp of, bear, uh, the, of the stamp of made in Rajasthan. And together, these three units are going to actually create jobs for over 5,000 people. And these, by the way, are just a very few examples of the kind of partnerships uh, that have together in Rajasthan's growth story. And so I'm saying here that nothing can be done by one alone. Nothing can be done by one individual, nothing can be done by one state. It's very, very important for all of us to understand our strengths, our weaknesses, to bring them together and make things happen within the state. And to me, you were right, it's the energy of the people of the state. Uh, Mr. Sadhguru just said that he found the uh, the kind of people that he was working with is very, very interesting. And I want to say it's really the energy of the people of Rajasthan that drives all of this. There is not just that, there is a great patience and there is a hope. And there is a knowledge that things will happen, they will come to fruition because we have waited long enough. Uh, members of the global family. So we are actually aiming to triple our economic growth very ambitiously to 12%. Because I really believe that if I have to create that 1.5 million jobs, I'm not going to be able to do it unless I'm going to be able to give that kind of huge push. So in Rajasthan, we are putting in a massive effort to create a skill or skilling of all our workers. And we have partnered with many companies already to start this. In. We have got the Singapore government to work with us on an ITI in uh, Udaipur uh, division and I believe that that is going to be off the ground very, very shortly and in fact will give us great dividends. As a part of the Honorable Prime Minister's Skilling India Campaign Initiative, it's very, very important for us to get all our youngsters on their feet. We don't want them to go outside. And so as I said, as the industry comes in and as the kids get educated and skilled, the two together, the two will come together to create that kind of energetic environment for Rajasthan. As we have just shown you in that uh, uh, presentation that was just made by the Principal Secretary Industries, we've taken you through a whole gamut of areas that we would like 
first to uh, touch. Through investment in infrastructure, uh -huh. which needs to come not just from the public sources, but we also have had huge and very positive experience with PPPs, so I really believe that that's an area that we can explore once again. The state government is very conscious of the fact that energy security has to remain just that. So we have to keep up with the growing uh, demand. And I believe that we will be able to do it by using the solar energy, which perhaps is going to be one of the major strengths of Rajasthan. 25,000 megawatts is a large amount. Some people said to me, will we be able to actually meet that? I believe we can. Because we are already, already making those steps in the right direction and I believe that very shortly with all the partnerships that are coming in from India and abroad, we are going to be able to cover the issues that we have talked about yesterday for the solar parks. I remember in your council meeting some of the people raised some uh, issues as far as solar parks were concerned, as solar energy was concerned. And I told you very categorically that we are very pleased to be able to have that interaction and to hear your views on it. We will make very quickly efforts to solve any of the problems that you felt was getting in the way of being able to make those large investments within those parts. The infrastructure has to be good. So if the electricity is good, if the roads are good, and if the water availability, which everybody worries about in Rajasthan, is okay, then industry will come. Investment will come and things will look up in our sun. So the area that we really have to pay a lot of attention to, apart from the roads and the electricity, is water. Now we all know that Rajasthan is the largest state in the country, but it has the least amount of water. And how do we in aim to leverage that water? That probably is going to be part of our success story. So I would like to tell you that it's a huge prioritized area, it's an area priority for us. And we are at the moment making a huge effort to interlink our river basins in the state so that surplus water from one basin can be transferred onto another basin. And that this should actually take uh, care of the seasonal water crises that we see we need to have, keep on having. So also over the top of this, we would like to try to lay a drinking water grid. This is important because we believe that this will allow for the easy offtake of the surface and water from the surface sources and give groundwater aquifers a chance actually to recharge. The state government is looking to uh, working in this field with a lot of people so there are people who are interested in doing water in a completely out-of-the-box manner. We are very, very open to suggestions as to how to get clean drinking water into the villages for our people who are working with our roads, but I think there could be many more ideas and we are open to those. This is an area of great priority. We are looking forward to hearing from you about it. Um, Mr. Munjar yesterday said to talk to us about uh, single window and the case of doing business, uh, the ease of doing business in Rajasthan. That, as I said, right, uh, India has so many states, and each state has been working on a particular or many particular areas. We don't need to reinvent the wheel. I believe that we already have areas of strength, and we need to be able to sit and exchange those, uh, those areas. And I believe that it's, it's uh, associations and business groups like the CII that can actually put us together to create that synergy. So I'm looking forward to that actually in the time to come. I need to be able to work closely with you and with them through you with all the other states to be able to create those areas. What we have, we have to give to the others and what they have, we will be happy to look at and take on if it suits Rajasthan. So, to support any kind of future growth, I think that uh, increased efficiency in delivery mechanisms is probably going to be very, very important. I think that this efficiency will come from the issues that I just put before you. At the Bible Gujarat Summit, the Honorable Prime Minister said that we want to make India the easiest place to do business. It's very nice to say, but not so easy to do. It's going to mean a lot of hard work for all of us. But as I said, I think most of the states are committed.
to making this uh, uh, to making this commitment, and to see that by doing this, we bring in and we invite people from outside to come and set up in India, make it comfortable to do that, so that we can create wealth, which will then go about strengthening not only the people of India, but of course the people of the particular state that we're talking about. We're looking at a lot of areas, we're looking at urban development, many ways within that to try and make things easier, make our cities more comfortable to live in. We have worked on a whole lot of regulations, rationalizing and simplifying them, in order to be able to make those cities of ours very much more worthwhile living. So that's going to be most important for our city. Investment where the economy of Rajasthan starts to move, the employment so that our kids don't have to go outside. Education and health facilities, which will strengthen them to stay within the state, be a healthy population that creates that kind of wealth that we're looking at. And uh, here I just want to give you an example. Yesterday, Chris said about talk about employability, and he said that it might be an interesting thing that we are able to create uh, small um, incubation centers. While children are learning or going to uh, university, I'm happy to tell you that we already had that in Ajmer and we are going to work for it in time to come with the other universities. But apart from that, he also said that apart from the student entrepreneurship policy, government initiative should set up incubation centers, a PPP mall with plug and play facilities in Jaipur as well as other tier two and three cities. And I want to tell you that not. Uh, Three days ago, we had an inquiry, um, and they said that it would be important to set up an arm, a centre of excellence, on behalf of the BSE, the Bombay Stock Exchange. We talked about it, and close to what Chris was saying yesterday, I just like to say that we have the pleasure of having the Bombay Stock Exchange people with us here today. I think he's here. I think the time is coming to that every Rajasthani understands how to make uh, the mayor go, as they say. Money makes the mayor go. So they know how to understand, they understand that. And whichever part of the world they're in, they make that a success. Business is a success. A branch of the BSC in Jaipur is not going to be a mean thing, it's important. And by this evening, we should have that energy in place. This was just three days ago, and discussed with you yesterday at the National Council meeting. So what I'm trying to say is, I'm just adding to the genuine goodwill that uh, Mr. Khan, Mr. Santanam and Vipinji talked about. I believe there is a future and there is a lot to look for in Rajasthan. Apart from all of this, we are also in the process of engaging knowledge partners in the simplification of the regulatory environment to enable Rajasthan to actually do business, better business, make it into a friendly business um, setup. So we're visiting, as I think that every state probably is and probably will be doing in time to come, we are revisiting all the old laws, regulations, cutting down on the levels, simplifying procedures. Maybe this was housekeeping, which was not overdue, but that housekeeping is now in process in place. And I believe that very shortly, you will not even have to go through, or at least you will be able to cut these so drastically that you'll be able to make this process even faster. We are paying attention to CSRs because we believe that's going to be a very important area where we can partner with you. We have now a secretary CSR and uh, an institutional mechanism for harnessing the strengths of the private sector by leveraging very meaningfully the funds at their disposal. For us. I just think a small step that I believe will make the difference, but which made many ripples. And just yesterday, it was a good day for us because the Honorable High Court declined to intervene in the government stand of prescribing minimum education qualifications for the Punjabi large institutions. I know that this has created a lot of waves. But I do believe this was in my hand. People said, why are we trying to MPs and MLAs? That's not in my hand. So I'm sure that will be taken up in its own course. But as far as the Punjabi Art Institutions are concerned, as you know, more money passes through the hands of the Punjabi Art Institutions than it would 
to the hands of the MPs and the MLAs. And it's very, very important that if you're handling that kind of money, that you know what you're signing, that you know what you're talking about. And since this is so very closely linked to development, it's delighted to hear the Prime Minister say it from the ramparts of the Red Fort, making it clear that this was now a very, very important program for the country. And I see why he says this, because you know, if people land at the Jaipur airport, in this where I did in the last uh, regime, he made a point that from the airport right into the city, the road on which our visitors would travel must look beautiful. Because it's the first impression that makes a difference. So you land into a country or a state, and if the first impression is bad, the immediate thing in the mind of the person is, oh well, I don't, you know, I don't think that it's a good idea to invest here. Before he even looks at figures, before he even looks at revenue, before he looks at anything else, that is the first impression that either puts him off or brings him in close sync with the government of that particular state or that country. So therefore it's very important and I think that he puts his finger exactly where it should be and I think that Rajasthan has picked it up from there. And for your information, I just making this, uh, making it a point because I think it's important for you to know that the yearly number of toilets that we were constructing, you must remember that it goes absolutely closely with the, uh, the, uh, the dignity of women in this, in this country and in this state. They were only 20,000. When the Prime Minister came with this program, in this last one year, we were able to take up to 2 lakhs. But because, and this, is a, this is the most amazing part, because we were able to bind it up or put it together with electoral reform, that's the education and electoral, uh, and say to them that you have to be educated to this level and all of you standing for election must at least have one toilet in your homes. It's gone up by four lakhs. So in this one year, six lakh units have been made. Now here's an area where I would really like you to apply yourselves. Rather than the state, where there is very important. 